Welcome to Sony's here with Kevin Clark. I am Kevin Clark. Nick Wright is here. Hi, Nick. Hey, great to great to be here. Congrats on the success. Congrats on the expanding family, the expanding podcast, the expanding YouTube presence. The the not the the not receding hairline looks as good as ever. It's well, great to see. That's the you. only thing that let's reverse that. Let's start with the receding hairline not happening, and then yeah. go into everything else. Um, you are the most famous person in Buffalo, New York. I, they hate me, bro. I mean, they hate me. It's funny. Should you do I, a live show from there? Or is it too nasty? Do they have good internet up there? I don't know. I mean, would I, like, if I did it, would it, like, broadcast the next day? I'm not sure. Um, I Listen, the, I, I went to, I lived in upstate New York for four years. Syracuse, mm. uh, quality city, uh, quality people. And I've got nothing against the good people of Buffalo. I understand it. You know, they wanted to live in Toronto and they wouldn't let them in. Um, but the thing is this. I am so goddamn sick of people in this league and in the media and the fans giving Josh Allen more credit for losing to Patrick Mahomes in that playoff game than Patrick Mahomes gets for winning that playoff game. And I am sick of people saying, oh, it's Brady Manning. Brady Manning was defined by you had the winner and you had the stats guy. You had the guy that won in the playoffs, the guy who won MVPs. Patrick Mahomes is the only one of the two that's done either. So Patrick Mahomes is Brady and Manning. Josh Allen, very good player. Very impressed by him. But it's I'm irritated by the whole narrative. I will point out that I do not think there's a lack of people giving Patrick Mahomes credit. Well, like, I think we're good on that. I think Mahomes, I think he's, he makes $500 million over 10 years. He's universally considered the best quarterback in football. He's not universally considered the best quarterback in football. He is not NFL 100 had him third. The, uh, another NFL thing had him fifth behind Justin Herbert. Your, your colleagues at the ringer is some of them picked them to not win the division. Some of them picked them at going into the year as the third team in the division. And universally, I have to listen to people call Josh Allen QB one in the league. And by the way, when did that become a big thing that everyone's like, he's Q, he's WR1, he's TE3, he's Q. Is that stupid? That's a fantasy football designation and a I really wanted to be in an NFL front office, but instead I have a podcast designation. Just say he's the best quarterback in football, people, or the second best quarterback in football. He's QB1. I'm just, shut up. So yeah, he has a lot of credit, not enough. Uh, the good news is, I, I think I think you did a wonderful monologue on your show yesterday. I don't want to reveal the payoff. I want everybody to go and discover it for themselves. But you did a wonderful uh, prepared statement. Uh, after after the Bills beat the Chiefs. Um, but I, I do think we've gotten into, and Bills fans are excited about it. They will they should be. have, they should be. Um, but I do think, and I, I think this is true of every single team now. Like, I, I, I'm sorry, my listeners are going to hear this all the time. And I, 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 I'm sorry to do it, but it's so impactful. Where, when I was doing the Matt LaFleur piece, Sean McVay said to me that he told Matt LaFleur that, the playoffs now are March Madness, and it's not about the best team winning. It's about the best team in that three-hour window winning. And all you should be doing is preparing your team for those three hours. So what happens on October 12th? Not exactly all that important. What happens on November 3rd? Not even that important. It's about, tra- these are my words, but it's about trajectory. It's about, I guess you could say load management, all of that stuff. And I kind of feel like we've gotten to a point, even though 25 million people watch that game, where everybody kind of says, that was fun. We'll do it again in January. No statements can be made. I think the only people making statements were people who wanted to shove it in your face, shove it in people on Twitter's face. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do think that there was a psychic energy. I I do think that the Bills needed that win just to feel, you know, Brandon Bean said to me many times that they they invested in D-line, not just last year. I mean, I heard people say, oh, they they signed they signed Von Miller to beat the Chiefs. They did, certainly. They admitted that. But they also picked pass rushers for the first two picks last year as well, um, two years ago. And so they needed that from a lift standpoint. But I actually think that we're almost in a, it's almost like an action movie. Like, it's self-contained. It was great. We had an amazing time. But it doesn't actually matter. 
Well, right. Where it will matter and where people are yelling, you know, at their screens or into their, you know, ear, either listening on the podcast is what about the one seed? And obviously that is highly significant. But I would remind people that last year, the Bills beat the Chiefs, holding the Chiefs to 20 points in Arrowhead, and Josh Allen even hurdled a guy. It was the whole thing, except the Bills' offense was more explosive in that game last year. And the Chiefs didn't respond by, like, ripping off 10 in a row. The Chiefs responded to that game by getting in the midst of the worst month of football they've had since Mahomes has been there. And when they played, that game was still an Arrowhead because it's a long season. And now, listen, I don't think the Bills are about to lose 5-7 of seven as they did last year. But I think people putting in Sharpie that they're the one seed is a little premature. I am about ready to put in Sharpie the Eagles as the one seed because yes. of their schedule moving forward and because it doesn't look like anyone else in the NFC with respect to the Minnesota Vikings, but they lost head-to-head to the Eagles already, so they're behind the eight ball there. Uh, I, I think the Eagles can run away with the one seed there. I think that with the AFC East being the only division – where nobody's below 500, the Bills' schedule is maybe not quite as easy as people thought. I think right now they are the betting favorite to be the one seed. And God knows there would never be a highly seeded team in Buffalo that just craters in the postseason. We would never see it happen. But um, I I think it is, especially in a 17-week season, I think it's a lot to ask. And I thought the best player on the field on Sunday, and then we can move on to whatever you want, was Von Miller. Josh Allen was unbelievable. I thought Von Miller was... Absolutely fantastic. To your point on load management, I know this would never happen. But I think the sharpest thing the Bills could do is tell Vaughn, you've got the next two months off. Like you're going to be like a healthy scratch because I think it is a concern that is he going to be healthy for the 19th game of the season, which is when they hope to play the Chiefs again. Let's get to the horoscope. Is it true, Nick Wright, that your birthday, I'm looking at Wikipedia here, congrats on having a Wikipedia page, is October 3rd? Uh, that is true. Wikipedia gets my birthday right. It gets a lot of things wrong, including has my has my dad's second wife listed as my mother, not my mother. And you know who doesn't like know. that? My I, mother. I, yeah, I can, I can guess. <laughs> you know, Were you actually a contestant <laughs> on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah, of course. I was okay. 22 I just, years old, 150 grand. So you're a Libra just like me. How so long we do you think that 50 grand today. lasted, by the way, Kevin Clark? With your gambling habits, about three hours. You know what? You want to know what's wild? They don't take the taxes out. They send you the check oh, for the no. full 50, and you're responsible for no the taxes. No withholding. No withholding. But here's the thing about that. That's winnings. And you know what you can offset against winnings? Losses. Losses. And, you know, and, you know, it's been 15 years. I think I'm safe on it. And it's true. I mean, I got that check and I blew it. So you went full Bezos. You went full when, Bezos. Just, you know. Yeah. Just, I mean, I was 22 years old living in a city with four casinos and even more gentlemen's clubs. That money was gone, bro. It's gone. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Libra. I'm a Libra. My wife's a Libra. My youngest daughter's a Libra. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Here we go. You have two choices today. Either jump into the thick of the mess with both feet or stay out of it altogether. There are definitely two distinct camps setting up their arsenals for battle. Realize that there is also a soft, tender, harmonious aspect that just wants peace. It will be hard to ignore the fact that your usual warring nature is ready to battle. Oh, that's perfect for today. That is perfect. Because today on the TV show, we're talking Kyrie Irving. Because one of his teammates was like, uh, he could be league MVP. And I am so, I've tried, listen, I've tried to kind of soft pedal my real Kyrie opinions, but his little flirtation with Alex Jones sent me over the edge and I've been waiting for the opportunity. So I, I am taking one of those options. I'm jumping in feet first into the battle today. And if you think Bills fans can be unhinged, Oh, let me introduce you to the to the, the folks that feel like Kyrie Irving's a freedom fighter. Those folks. Hey, but you know what? I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. All right. Let's get you out with Club Kevin. Uh, who you got? Anybody in the world you can induct. Doesn't matter. TV, athlete, politics. Anybody the in the world 
anybody gets inducted in the club, Kevin, you said politics. It doesn't matter. I mean, Mark Ingram put in Joe Biden one time. Wow. Well, listen, I've been watching the debates in Georgia and I've been really impressed with the things Herschel Walker's, <laughs> but I don't, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go with him. Try to stay apolitical here. Um, all right. You know what? You know who I'm going to induct? Travis Kelsey for not oh, only yeah. being the greatest receiving tight end ever. I'm putting my plant in my flag there. Sorry, Tony G and sorry, Gronk, the greatest receiving tight end ever. But Travis Kelsey, about an hour before we recorded this, came out, restructured his deal, freed yes. up about $4 million. Ooh. And that made me do the wind, old wind, Brian wind horse. Wind horse. Wind the horse. old wind horse. The old wind horse. What does that, what's going on in Kansas City? And so, you know, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if Brian Burns or Odell Beckham or mm. I don't know. I don't know. But here's what I do know. One of the local beat reporters, like Kelsey did this so they could bring someone up from the practice squad. I'm like, yeah, I don't think I don't think the practice squad guy needed four million in cap space. So I think there might be a bigger move afoot. So Travis Kelsey. Also, um, I'm just imagining of those guys being like, uh, Travis, we need you to, to redo your deal. We've got we've got a third linebacker who's, yeah. you know. Dave Taub likes him on special teams, so we're going to try to work yeah. him in. So if you could just restructure your whole deal, that'd be great. So Kelsey, the greatest receiving tight end ever, also the only person with a documented cooler coat than the one I wore to this, the one he wore to the Super Bowl Ooh, parade, yeah. which I tried to buy from him on Twitter a year ago. I DM'd him. I'm like, go? hey, man, I haven't seen you wear that coat ever again. It, it, uh, can I buy it from you? And he was like, I got to hold on to it, man. Might need it again. I was like, yeah, that's my guy. He's like, you might have to run that sucker back. Uh, and for being a team guy, Travis Kelsey gets in the club, Kevin. Travis Kelsey, Brian Windhorst, Travis Kelsey's jacket. They're all coming in. Nick Wright, talk to you soon, buddy. Mm-hmm.